Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. Pathways of righteousness and truth, my spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Oh, I should wander the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants. Beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Greetings, sisters and brothers. Tonight is Holy Thursday or Maundy Thursday. It is the first day of what is called the Triduum, the three days, the three holiest days of the Christian calendar. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. And then, of course, on Sunday, we have the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. But tonight is the first of the three days, and, um, and the title of our sermon for tonight is Intimacy with God. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sisters and brothers, um, I thought it would I should film this at night because every year on Holy Thursday, our worship is in the evening. Um, tonight I am at home and I have the objects from my home altar, a candle in the shape of a trinity, uh, a cross, and holy oil, scented oil which we will use at the end um, 
for our closing ritual. So when we have Holy Thursday at First Lutheran Church, every year we have a Seder, a Passover Seder meal with our Jewish sisters and brothers um, from the local synagogue. And, uh, and tonight, in fact, is the very night of Passover. So we keep them in our hearts this evening. Um, and so for our Seder at First Lutheran Church, as people are arriving for the meal, we always have a time um, where we have a foot washing as they arrive. And so I always invite them, oh, would you like to have your feet washed? And let me tell you, not a lot of people take me up on this offer. The only people who are enthusiastic about it are the children. Sure, Pastor Linda, you can wash my feet. And they take off their socks and shoes and let me go at it. But the grown-ups are like, oh, no, no, no. I would never want you to wash my feet. I'd feel so awkward and uncomfortable. Oh, no, no. Thank you anyway. And so... I wash the children's feet and maybe the one or two adults who feel comfortable enough to let me do this. So um, a few years ago, what happened is I washed a woman's feet and I'm always very prayerful, very mindful. I put um, scented oil in the basin with the water and then at the end I make the sign of the cross on the person's feet and say a silent prayer, a blessing upon the person. And, um, and so when I was done, the woman got up and she said, thank you so much. She said, um, now you sit down and I'll wash your feet. And I confess I did just what all of you did. I was like, oh, no, no, thank you anyway. I just, you know. And then I thought, wait a minute, if I'm asking people to do this, I need to be courageous enough to be on the other end of it and to let someone wash my feet and to allow myself to be that vulnerable that I would open myself to let someone um, do this very intimate thing with me. So we can understand Peter who said to Jesus, oh no, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. But Jesus said, Peter, unless you let me do this, um, you can never truly have a part, be a part of me. We can never truly be one unless you're willing to let yourself be that vulnerable that you can let me wash your feet. Let me love you that intimately. So sisters and brothers, the question for us tonight is can you be courageous enough to let God love you that deeply, that intimately, to let yourself be that vulnerable in order to have that depth of intimacy with God. The older I get, um, my theology becomes more and more incarnational. Okay, I'm, I'm just so deeply moved by the fact that the creator of the cosmos loves us so much that this God, as it says in Philippians 2, did this act of kenosis, which means complete self-emptying. The, the creator of the cosmos emptied God, emptied God's self of all God's power to come and live among us and take on a body, um, a vulnerable flesh and blood body. We're told that Jesus got thirsty and hungry and tired and weary. Uh, and we know during this holy week that his body was vulnerable um, and that people hurt and harmed his body, um, abused him, struck him, tortured him, killed him. 
that's the extent that our God went in this great love for us and for this world to to empty God's self of all that power and become that vulnerable for love of us. And this week, as I was pondering this foot washing story, I thought, my goodness, the, the creator of the cosmos in Christ, God made flesh, had a face. What I would do to behold that face, I hope someday I do behold that face, um, what I would do to see what did he, what did he look like? You know, what, what was his smile like? What were his eyes like? And especially as he gazed at his disciples whom he loved with the depth of that love in his eyes. And can I imagine, can you imagine his eyes looking at you this night with that depth of love? But then I remembered that just a couple chapters before Jesus washes his disciples' feet, we have the story that's in all four Gospels of a woman who washed his feet. And in this Gospel of John, um, in all the Gospels she's not named, but in this Gospel she is named, and it is, it is said that it's Mary of Bethany, the sister of Martha, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus. Jesus had just raised her brother Lazarus from the dead. And in the next chapter, Martha makes a big feast, probably in gratitude to Christ. And Mary um, cracks open this jar of incredibly expensive perfume and pours it all over his feet and weeps on his feet and dries his feet with her hair and, and just pours out her love for Christ in this intimate way. And did you notice that Jesus lets himself receive her love? He lets himself be vulnerable and be on the receiving end of that intimate love. And it must have moved him so much because then just a few days later, he follows that example and, and repeats that by doing that for his disciples. About seven years ago, I led a women's retreat in New Mexico at a place called Casa del Sol, my favorite retreat house in the whole world, in Abiquiu, New Mexico. And the retreat was called Woman Be Set Free. And it, it's based on Luke chapter 13, this story of a woman who's been crippled, bent over for 18 long years. And Jesus sees her and says, woman, you are set free from your ailment. And this women's retreat was geared towards women who had experienced some kind of trauma in their lives and specifically in their bodies, whose bodies had been violated or traumatized in some way, maybe abuse, um, sexual assault, um, illness, ravaged with illness. We had women um, who all were ready to be healed from whatever it was. And so we spent the whole week together, 24 seven in Bible study, prayer, worship, but also doing fun things, hiking and walking and sharing meals and together and the stories of our lives together. And finally, on the last night of the retreat, we had a foot washing ceremony uh, where we washed one another's feet. And do you know, every single woman was courageous enough to participate and to wash someone's feet and then to sit down and let another wash her feet. And so tonight, I invite you, um, those of you who are members of one of my churches, I sent you a guide to Holy Week for you to do worship practices in your homes. 
And tonight the, the ritual is a foot washing. So I invite you at the end of this sermon, we'll there will be some special music and then for you to fill up a basin with warm water and maybe add some scented oil and um, prayerfully and mindfully wash your feet if you live alone, but imagine Christ washing your feet. And if you live with others, uh, I invite you to wash one another's feet, both to wash someone else's and then to let someone wash your feet. The word mondi, mondi Thursday, is from the Latin word mandare, command. Jesus says, after he washes his disciples' feet, tonight he says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, that we are to follow his example. And so, sisters and brothers, tonight, can you um, let yourself be so vulnerable that you can receive the gift of God's love for you, God who loves you, that, um, can you let yourself be that vulnerable? Can you let yourself be loved that intimately? Can you let yourself be loved eternally by Christ this night? Amen.